Back in February of this year, triathlete icon Bob Babbitt held one of his popular town hall meetings to celebrate the 35-year anniversary of the 1982 Ironman in Kona. Bob's guests were of honor were a pair of triathletes who, by their respective 82 performances, helped endurance sports move towards the mainstream. And easy to argue, they planted the seeds for the first reality TV show currently cursing our nations today. I am joined by 1982 Ironman women's winner Kathleen McCartney and the runner-up, who might even be more famous, Julie Moss. I've been, I can remember it like yesterday. When 82, I was in De Pere, Wisconsin. It was a freezing <laughs> afternoon. We were watching ABC Wild World of Sports and your story flashed across the uh, screen. That stayed with me for 35 years, so when I saw you guys were in town, man, I had to reach out to you, and it's so cool that you uh, accepted the invitation. Uh, can you believe 35 years have gone by? I can't believe it's been 35 years, although I've been active in the sport uh, during that time, and but it does seem like uh, And you're going back, correct? Right? Going yeah. back, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, my body is slower. But that feeling of being 23 again at 58 years old, training every day, I'm loving it. I really For, am. We should mention, back in 82, the thought of swimming two and a half miles, 2.4 miles, riding a bike for over 100 miles, and then finishing it off with a marathon, that was considered... Nuts. Oh, yeah. 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 Nuts. yeah. yeah. So how did you guys, what, what about your, your personalities attracted you to something that crazy? Well, I went over in, the, in 1981 to Kona to watch the Ironman. I was a spectator that year, and I wasn't a triathlete. I wasn't a swimmer, cyclist, or runner. I was just standing on the seawall watching the race. And that sucked and you in. And as soon as the gun went off, I just knew that I had to get off that seawall, get into that big group of people going off to like do something that seemed impossible to me. And how did you get in? I was watching TV like you were, Paul. I turned the TV <laughs> on a year earlier and watched the Ironman competition, and I thought it was crazy. But they're in Hawaii, and there are these sculpted gods, gods and speedos. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's a couple of pluses here. Forget those distances, but oh, they look good. And so, like, you didn't know, you barely knew one another. How did when back in the day? How did one train for a triathlon when no one even knew what, what the heck it was? We were all just figuring it out. I mean, it was basically just try to do as much as you can between going to school working full-time you need to get on your bike get out there and run and swim and uh, just miles lots of miles you kind of strike me as you kind of just winging it totally totally because this was a, a school project when I saw it on TV I thought oh I'll use this for my senior project at Cal Poly and I'll get my instructor to sign off on it and so and then I proceeded to do what I did with all my school projects I just kind of forgot about them and pushed them aside Okay, well now a couple months before the Ironman, I really haven't done much, and I'm panicking because I've got to show progress on this project, or I'm not going to graduate. So I went out and ran a marathon, with my longest run being about an hour, and I ran a marathon, and it was horrible. And so I came about a few weeks later. I came to Mission Bay and ran the Mission Bay Marathon because I had to erase that horrible feeling. And then a week later, I'm literally landing in Kona, not having done the swim or the bike yet. So winging it. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I take you back to, I believe it was February 6th yes. of, of 82. Yes. Uh, you guys go into the water. You, 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 That's where you lost most of your ground, right? For, yeah, was, I had a terrible, I just so By the time you get out of, off the bike, she's 20 minutes in front yes. of you. But you have a little bit of an equipment problem. Quickly, how? what, what happened to you? Uh, well, I had an equipment problem. That was, uh, on the bike, everything went okay. The, and I got to see the ABC camera truck, so I knew that I was doing all right. But my equipment problem came when I started the run. And I ran into the change area, and I suffered the wardrobe malfunction. Broken bra. <laughs> Broken bra. And yeah, you have to snapped the snap right off of it. And you borrow a bra well, from a volunteer. I, absolutely. There's two women in there to help me, and I sized them up. And one definitely was is... Too big. And the other one was, was about right. right. Yeah, so I just said to her, please, give me your bra. So she's 20 minutes in front of you. Right. You're unaware of the bra problem. I have no idea. Uh, but you're feeling good. I was feeling great. I started feeling better and better throughout the run. And by mile six, I moved into second place. And uh, I felt fantastic. And now we're going to get close to history. In our, in our mm -hmm. sports department, we have a phrase, uh, crawl if you must. And I think that phrase it comes from the piece of video we're about to show people. You know, trainers always want you to push your body right. to failure, which is exactly, you had this thing won. And what happens? Go ahead, tell us. What happens is I, uh, happens. I got to about a quarter mile and 
everything just stopped on me. My legs went out from under me, my body lost control of everything. I was a hot mess, down on the ground, and I can't get up. And there's the ABC camera truck just filming it all. So it was humiliating, it was scary, and I really wanted to lay back on the pavement and just and quit. That was the first moment I felt like quitting. And you're unaware any of this is going I on? I had no How idea. How is that possible? No idea. So you you run by not knowing that she's on the ground? I didn't. I didn't see her on the ground. Because you were in your own private I was private in my health. own space just trying to find the finish line. It was dark. There were bright lights mounted on in the trees. It was as if you're on stage at night with all the lights. The people were, have already flooded into the streets because Julie was on the ground right. and there are people surrounding her trying to figure out what was going on. And I was just focused trying to find the finish line. I didn't know where the finish line was. You know, I'm, I'm surprised ABC, uh, you know, with that, they had the ski jumper with the agony of defeat. I'm surprised you didn't become the agony of defeat. There was some chatter about it. But I have to tell you, it was 29 seconds to crawl the finish line behind Kathleen. It would have taken too long. And in that, well, in that 29 seconds, I went from thinking, oh, I'd lost the race and I'm, and it's all a big waste of time to realizing that when you go that deep within yourself and you listen to that voice that says, don't quit, and just you keep finding a way to find more energy, there's no way you don't feel like you've won something big. Do we have the video of the of the ski jump and, and Julie side by side? If we do, let's roll it. I'll, well, aren't I'll, I'll, you clever, I'll pretend huh? to be, I guess we don't have the, uh, I wanted it side by side. Anyhow, okay. have you, have, have you, Experience that ever? I have not. There was in uh, one race where in let's say I think it was October of um, '82 when they held the Ironman for the second time. I hit the wall with two miles to go. I was in second place again, and I hit the wall and I just felt like my legs would have just collapsed underneath me and I had to walk for two miles because my legs completely gave out. In essence, though, it was the first reality show ever, huh? I mean, think well, of the audience. You had half the nation. Anybody who in a snowy city, which was half and three quarters of the nation, was watching, and I guess you could say so. Yeah. And I mean, that was reality TV at its finest, very quickly. Well, and ABC did something completely <coughs> different on White Boulder Sports. They put it to music. They stopped talking. It was really very um, unusual yeah. how they handled that piece. They really knew they had something that they wanted to protect. And sitting here with you reminds me, 35 years ago. The week after they aired the Iron Man, they flew us back to New York to go into the ABC studios um, and sit there with the legendary Jim McKay. Wow. So here wow. we are, that Paul must Rudy, have been, we're uh, reliving a nice moment You're kind of there. slumming right now, yeah. aren't you? 35 <laughs> years later, you we get forever, you. You guys are, it's a good thing you, you get along so well because you're forever linked in sports history. Yeah, forever yeah. linked. Yeah. So, I mean, I assume you guys, do you now train together or do you? In 2012, we went back and we decided we would join forces as went from going from competitors to collaborators. And Kathleen called me up and said, I know you haven't been doing the sport for a while, but would you consider training with me? And I said, sure, I'll train with you, but doing the Ironman, oh, no, no. But after training for a couple of months together, it's a, it's, it's a touchstone. You go to the, I, I go back to the Ironman when I want to discover something new about myself and I want to push myself and I want to feel like I'm just alive. Uh, you know, I, I want to, you're wearing the Tri-City Medical yes, Center. They're, yes. they're a big sponsor on the Prep Picks Report. You might not be participating in the the anniversary run. Absolutely, swim. right. If not, explain, uh, go ahead. Give, right, in 2007, I had a ruptured herniated disc and debilitating pain, like chronic pain that was unthinkable. And I had a very successful surgery by Dr. Neville Lean at Tri-City Medical Center. And I was able to feel healthy and strong again. But even then, I didn't ever think I would ever do another Ironman or run again. But in 2012, when I wanted to go back to do Ironman, as Julie was saying, to just discover my strength again after going through some really hard times, I thought, okay, I can just walk that marathon. And Dr. Lean at Tri-City Medical Center gave me a training protocol to strengthen my core and to get me back out there to be able to do the Ironman. And sure enough, I went to there and showed up in 2012. I was able to run every step of the way. My back feels stronger and better than ever. And I'll be doing my fourth Ironman since That's 2012. And I never thought I could That's do that That's why again. we like having them as a sponsor. Yeah, the they're fantastic. So ladies, before I let you go, you know, young athletes who are now into the uh, triathlete type deal. Mm -hmm. How, what's your advice to young athletes? How much training is too much training? When is it appropriate for kids to go full bore, to, to, to find their uh, wall, so to speak? What is your advice to youngsters? I'd say the most important thing as a young child is to, to try to try so many different types of sports. 
expose yourself to everything and then see what you love, see where your passions are. And I feel like with moderate training, you can go through your whole life if you train moderately and stay healthy. I've been training moderately since college and I'm still able to go back. 10 seconds, Julie. Yeah, I think you just need to start. If you have a passion for something and you feel drawn to it, don't worry if you don't have the experience, you don't have the best equipment. Just have a passion for it. Have a great attitude. A great attitude will get you so far down the line. It got me to the finish line of the 82 Ironman. Very cool. Ladies, it has been such Thank an honor so to enjoy much. 10 minutes with you. <laughs>